Hey guys, still there, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, where I'm back at the Hurry Up mission. In the previous video I did on this mission, I built a battlecruiser, the Resistance, and the Resistance was futile. The Resistance very, very quickly sank. It was not particularly heavily armed, and unfortunately it turned out that it was just not really up to par with the war German warships which were coming after me. So, um... This time around, I'm going to try something else. I'm going to build a heavy cruiser, which is oriented around torpedoes, which I know is a bit of a contradiction, but I hope that that's going to work. Now, I have to say, I've been getting really frustrated with this one mission. I have tried destroyers, I've tried heavy cruisers, I've tried the battle cruiser, I've tried a lot of different configurations, but every single time, something goes wrong. Sometimes it's AI programming, where the it, this says the enemy will never retreat. Well, that's a plain lie, because I've had it happen where they just withdraw. They just do a bit of damage to your light cruisers, sink one or two transports, and then they just all run. I don't know why, I don't know how to counter it, but this enemy will never retreat is just not true. I've had it happen where the light cruisers got overwhelmed in the first part of the battle, and I mean, sure enough, they will get overwhelmed, but at least sometimes they have torpedoes, and that allows them to do still some damage. I've had uh, destroyers, the enemy destroyers, that is, just send out waves after waves of torpedoes and sink almost all the transports. I think I'm on attempt number 10 at this point. So, well, we'll just see how it goes. And uh, <laughs> I just don't really know how to plan for something that I cannot plan for. Because I know what the enemy has... But every single time it is a different configuration. Sometimes it's a 15-inch gun. Sometimes it's a 9-inch gun. Sometimes it's destroyers which are armed with guns. Sometimes they're heavily armed with torpedoes. You never quite know. Anyway, enough chatter. Let's get to the building. Um, I'm not going to build a destroyer. I'm going to build an armored... Or Can I build a battle cruiser oriented around torpedoes? Can I make it that that nutty? Let's go for the biggest I can find. Electric propulsion. Lots and lots of torpedoes. Yes. Why the hell not? At this point, I'm up for trying silly designs. Just because I still want to have some fun with the game. Instead of just being frustrated at how the game is not allowing me to actually get the mission completed. And yes, I will definitely take credit for uh, fucking up my designs. Absolutely. But... This has frustrated me greatly, this mission. Alright, torpedoes on the stern. I need a funnel. Let's go for a tall funnel. Uh, we have forced boilers, which puts engine efficiency at 77. I don't need range at all. Bulkheads to many. Uh, Citadel, I'll take a Citadel 3. I'm almost at cost, by the way. Oh, I still need to add a gun. Haha, <laughs> sure. Centerline gun, 9 inch, dual barrel. Uh, that's going to be my gun. The rest is going to be down to torpedoes. And potentially some secondary guns, if, if I can fit those. Main, oh, you need at least two, huh? Ugh, fine. Uh, a standard superimposed barbette over there. How can I possibly fit a gun with that budget? Well, <laughs> she fits. She fits, but only just. Ah, oh, fuck it. Here goes nothing. Here goes absolutely nothing. Nope, I cannot afford that. You know what? I'm just going to make this a single turret. Single barrel. Oh, I'm still above? Are rangefinders that expensive? There. And then... No, high TNT is utterly unaffordable. That's unaffordable. White power is unaffordable. Leadite. Yeah, sure, we're going to fire HE. I guess that's a possibility. Just fire HE. No barbette armor, no anti torpedo protection, no anti flooding system, standard bulkheads. What could possibly go wrong with this ship? We got this. So long as I stay at range and just dump torpedo after torpedo salvo into the water. Hoping to hit the enemy warships. Now, it's going to take a bit of time for the battlecruiser to arrive, despite a cruiser speed of 36 knots. Um, 
I have plenty of torpedoes. These ships also come with torpedoes, also 24 inch, at a range of 22.3. I want them to start aggressively sending those things out the moment that they become available. I have them on port, starboard, bow and stern. And where exactly are my transports? This is something else that I just don't get. Sometimes the AI throws these in formations of 5. Now it's 3, 5 and 2. You never quite know what they're going to do. Except for one thing. They will not run away. They just won't. And I don't get why. And I find it really frustrating. But the ships, the transports, they just don't run. Like the setter over here. Uh, the setter is the lead ship of the whole fleet, the whole convoy. And she is trying to turn around, trying to turn tail. And I get that you're losing a bit of speed through that turn. That makes perfect sense. However, you should start to increase speed or just break up your whole fleet and not have to wait for the lead ship, the setter, to turn around. Break it up into smaller formations and have these ships just turn around on the spot and start heading that way. Because as it stands, I don't really think that I'm going to be able to keep these ships off of me for very long. Now this warship is usually the battle cruiser because it materializes first. It's the easiest to spot. Um, the destroyers, however, are a different story altogether. You don't quite know when they're going to appear, but it usually is at a range of 3 kilometers that they get detected. And something else that has been frustrating me quite a bit is that I think it's the uh, Karadok over here. She's the flagship of the fleet. Now, if you have a ship like a battlecruiser that's far away from a fleet, it's going to say it has a debuff because it's far from the flagship. You can see it over on the left side of the screen. 15% debuff far from flagship. If these light cruisers die, and, well, more often than not, they actually do die then there is no flagship. And I'm stuck with a permanent 15% debuff simply because I couldn't save a light cruiser. Which, as far as I'm concerned, is more of a speed bump than anything else. Because no way in hell are these ships going to survive. They are valiantly fighting back with our 8-inch. Uh, yeah, let's just set up smokescreen. We have more torpedoes in the water here. If the ship doesn't maneuver too much... I might be able to land a hit. No, she's already turning away. Ah, crap. Now, that's the heavy. Where's the destroyers? Where are those guys? I hope to still be throwing out torpedoes. As many as I can. Uh, detach. Hermes, keep going. This is no time to just sit there in your smoke. Speed up, man. Because otherwise that happens. Glorious. Currently at 12 kilometers out. I can fire torpedoes at 13. And I can throw out 10 per side. I'm not exactly going to be relying on my 9-inch guns. Let alone the 5. Well, it may be the 5 versus destroyers, but... Beyond that, I don't really believe that the 5-inch guns are going to be particularly effective. Hermes is going down. Courtesy of not running away fast enough. Caradoc. I need you to turn around a little bit and see if you can land torpedoes on the... Oh, the Moltke has taken torpedo hits. Severe hits, by the way. 812.71. Nice work. So the light cruisers could get something done before they're going down. The Moltke... Whoa, they sunk it. Well done. That is not at all what I was expecting. But I'll happily take it. Because that makes life for my battle cruiser quite a bit easier. Provided that I don't rush in head first and start eating torpedoes myself. Now, at this point, I have also had it happen that the AI just runs away. You sink one of their ships, they sink one of yours, and then they just disappear. And then for the next, well, two and a half hours in game time, you're just chasing them. Which makes for really boring gameplay. I don't want to see that, because I've already done it. 
I have already had it happen with um, the uh, Project H, where I spent the better part of several hours chasing down a warship. And then, even, well, even then, I was still unable to sink it. Setter. Why is this setter still doing five knots? I get that engine power is not exactly the best, but this is terrible. Torpedoes away on the V3. And it looks like the Glorious. Yeah, the Glorious is also trying to get hits in. Uh, just fire HE only. Got those Lidite propellants. With any luck... Oh, that was a good hit. With any luck... She's going to slow down, thanks to the damage that she's taken, and still run into the torpedoes here. Caradoc. Careful now. That's long-range fire coming in. There's another destroyer. See, the destroyer just completely disappeared. At a range of, what, 2.9? Yeah, around about 3 kilometers, and your DDs just vanish. They're just gone. Just no longer spotted. Now, what's also going to make a vast difference in my ability to hit these ships, or not hit these ships with the battlecruiser, is their hydro. If they have it, then it's going to be a pretty good challenge for me to try and get hits on those ships, because they will see my torpedoes coming, whether they're electric propulsion or not. Oh, crap. Normal torpedo launch. 9 inch and 5 inch are firing. It looks like the Caradoc might just survive that one torpedo salvo, and nobody else has gotten affected either. Slow down to full. That's another DD. Ah, there's the cruisers. I don't think I'm going to be able to finish off these destroyers with my own torpedoes. I don't really see that happening, but I might be able to sink this cruiser, because it's going to be too far away from the hydro, and will not benefit from early torpedo detection. Oh, somebody got hit. Yeah, the setter. See, that's what you get for not running away. You get what you deserve. Alright, torpedoes. On that target, please. I know that my torpedo tubes are completely unprotected. And that means that there is a fairly high chance that they will get blown off at some point. Which, well, it just really can't be helped. Now, I did hear a torpedo launch from the Glorious. I don't see a torpedo launch from the Glorious. Where are my torps? I know that they're stealthy torps, don't get me wrong, but they're not this stealthy. At least I should be able to see what my torpedoes are doing. And not even I can see it, which makes it very confusing. Good hit. Flooding. Is that 5-inch fire that's doing that? Or 9-inch? Another flooding hit. I might just get that thing sunk. But I still have to start turning towards the convoy here, because they are about to get hit by three destroyers and the accompanying torpedoes. What sort of propellants do you have? TNT. Alright, since these things are poorly armored, let's go for HE. Look at this. Range? 1.3 kilometers. Accuracy? Just about 3%. That is it. 3%. Range? About 800 meters. No torpedoes ready? No torpedoes ready? No torpedoes ready. My torpedoes are ready, but the, v the uh, V1 sees them coming. Unfortunately. Ah, glorious. Please turn around. And ju just run right in. Potentially launching torpedoes on the stern. See, I'm once again not seeing the torpedoes. It's like they're just not getting launched. Because normally you see these torpedoes in the water. And you just see a wave of those things head towards the enemy. But I don't see that. 
That ship has taken severe flooding, but that was due to the HE blast that I threw at it, not so much the torpedoes that potentially have hit it. Come on! Range, 600 meters. Please, 500 meters. Oh, now you're going to torp it. You do see that there's a ship behind it, right? Oh, that was dangerous. If that ship had dodged, then the Agincourt would have been very, very, very dead. But so far, Caradoc has been able to do some damage. Unfortunately, the V1... Yeah, there it is. Oh, no. Goodbye, Caradoc. It's been fun. Yep. Alright, so at least the Caradoc or some other ship was able to sink two destroyers. So now we have sunk a battleship, two destroyers, and there's the third one. And then there's the heavy cruiser and the light cruiser. So I think we're about halfway through. I might yet win this. Just so long as we don't accidentally start firing torpedoes into our own formation. The V1 at this point only has a 5 inch gun. And with the lid eye propellant I only really need to get lucky once or twice. Especially with the 9 inch. But once again this ship is smoking up. Oh! Cute. I didn't hit it with torpedoes did I? I did! I've been mistaken, the battlecruiser has been torpedoing ships. And it did almost 4800 damage. Did it do that before as well? Not really. No. Okay, so the Glorious, with its torpedo tubes, has been able to do some damage. That means that if I sink this ship, I probably win the mission. Finally. Finally. Glorious. At this point, this destroyer has nothing on you. It has no real torpedo power at the moment. It's still going to be reloading for a long time. And while you have torpedoes, I'm very reluctant to fire those as long as the Royal Arthur is behind it. Still, once that ship is no longer a problem, like now... I might be able to launch torpedoes, provided that my poor torpedo tubes are ready. Come on, man. Range? 300 meters. There you go. Right on the midships. Bow belt. Oh, sorry, not, uh, not midships. It was the bow hit. 800 and 303. That should kill it, one would think. Come on, please go under. Yes. There you go. Is that the mission complete? Yes. Damn, I finally got it. After all these attempts. And I have uh, done the recording for this particular video oh, three times now. Finally, it is done. Um, interestingly, not so much courtesy of my own ship. That was not down to... <laughs> down to the glorious... Because what she did was really not that glorious. She sunk one destroyer and one heavy cruiser, but more by accident, I think, with the torpedo tubes than by design. But hey, she sunk it. So it worked. Anyway, um, let me know which, what designs worked for you on this mission. Because I have tried a lot of stuff. I tried battle cruisers. I tried uh, destroyers. I tried heavy cruisers. Every single one didn't particularly work out too well. But finally, this one, especially uh, transferring over that 24-inch torpedo bonus to the light cruisers, just by picking it as a bonus, that, I think, saved me in the end. Anyway, let me know how you guys did it down below in the comments, and I shall see you guys soon for more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts.